Hey guys, we're back and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about pieces and dissing and getting dissed and what to do and how to deal with that when that happens. Come on baby, come on. I got my color palette set out here and we're going to do some pretty pretty basic color scheme um, and I wanted to get a little variety in here so I got some covers all, some flame blue, some molotow, some molotow transparent and uh, some flame products as well, some other flame blue as well. We also have uh, the new black and blue soft caps. We're going to be trying those out on some of these cans. And uh, oh, let me talk about the colors I'm using. So I, we got a uh, we got signal blue in the flame blue, and I got tulip blue in the in the new covers. All I don't know which I'm going to use one of these two. I'm not sure which one yet. Uh, also, we have uh, Linda Sunset. We got Dare Orange Light, uh, Papyrus, um, Sahara Beige Middle, Sahara Beige Light, and Transparent Black, which is really translucent black, by the way. Um, but it's called transparent. If it was transparent, it'd have no color. Um, also, let's see what else. I guess that's pretty much it. So let's uh, let's get over to the character and start doing the steps, and then uh, I can kind of start laying it out for you. Get painting, and then maybe you'll be inspired to paint something yourself. All right. So here's the situation. Your piece gets dissed. You can you can make one of two choices. You can get butt hurt about it and uh, and get in a fight or do whatever you need to do, or you can turn that lemon lemon into lemonades, right? And then uh, just show that person how much better you are. So that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna, <clears throat> you know, graffiti's part of hip hop, right? So this is an opportunity to show your opponent how much better you are, to step up. They basically called you out to battle, right? They said, oh, I don't respect you. I'm gonna diss you. So now's your chance to be like, yo, toy, how much tighter am I? And that's what we're gonna do here. So I got the character sketched out. I used some flame blue with the, with the... I went ahead and sketched it out with some flame blue and the color is the deep black. Uh, it's a very good low pressure acrylic. It covers really good, so it's great for doing your foundation of your character. Uh, generally when you're doing a character, you wanna do your outline first, because once you start laying in your fill color, it just doesn't become all blotchy and, and uh, you know hard to follow. So you can kind of work around these lines. You're gonna go back over them again, but it gives, you, it gives you a good foundation to work from as you're filling in with the paint. And uh, this is a, a process of layers, so we're gonna do the black, like I said, we're doing the black first. I'm also gonna be using the transparent black and laying some shadows of his hair on the parts where it overlaps. Probably not in the blue part, because that's a background of this, but like right here you'll see a shadow, right here you'll see a shadow, right here you'll see a shadow. I think it'll, it'll give it a bit more depth. And I know some of you haven't used the transparent yet, so this is a good opportunity to see it in action. The transparent comes stock with the blue dot, okay? We also have some of the new black and blue dots as well, so you get to try those out. Um, but one thing I wanna mention is with any can, any paint, any brand that you use, I don't ever recommend starting it with the stock tip. Usually the stock tip is kind of thin. And remember, like I've said in previous videos, these cans travel a long ways to get to you, a long, long ways. So what I would recommend doing, even with the transparents, start your can with a fat cap. Because what that'll do is that'll, that'll clear any residual resin that might be stuck in the straw or a chunk of pigment or whatever that might clog it up. Um, you're gonna have much less of a chance of clogging your can, your cap, or any of that stuff by starting with the fat cap. And of course, make sure you agitate your cans well by sh both shaking it like this and going like that and agitating the stuff in the bottom of the can. Remember, these travel a long way to get to you. Uh, it is a good year from production by the time you actually receive this can, so keep that in mind. Um, I have a little board over here set aside, so what we're going to do is we're going to start the cans. You want to come over here, brother? <clears throat> Let's get spraying. The transparent usually doesn't have this problem, but again, you know, force a habit. Make sure you do that. Um, Let's go ahead and get this Sahara Beige started too. Beautiful. So this is well agitated. You see how at the beginning you have some of this white resin mixed in with the pigment? Once you get the can going, it eventually goes away. There we go, see, much better. All right, and that's why you wanna go ahead and uh, start the can first, because if you did that on your artwork, you would have to go back over it, right? Does that make sense, guys? Right, let's go ahead and start laying in this transparent. Uh, now that the can is started, we can use that soft blue cap. All right, so what we want to do is kind of give the effect that is more of a, you know, it's cartoony, but we want to give the effect that is three-dimensional, right? So I'm going to lay in some of this transparent. I'm going to get over on this side, brother. Hopefully I don't block with my shadow. 
So the transparent black is basically um, a clear lacquer with a suspension of a little bit of black pigment in it. So what we're gonna do is lay some of that in here. So um, now this isn't a natural way for me to paint, but I'm trying to keep my shadow from getting in the way. So I apologize if it doesn't come out right. In fact, I'll do it with my right hand. I'm left-handed by the way. So don't hate, but we're just doing a shadow. So just lightly dust it. Just make a couple passes. A little goes a long way, so don't overdo it, guys. That's beautiful. Because what you want to do is give the impression of a shadow. And it's better to do this step first because once you start doing the other parts, it'll be the layer behind it, right? Does that make sense? Like I said, it'll take a few passes and it's very thin. Remember, it's a very thin lacquer, so don't do it all at once. Do a few passes, let it set, come back and do a few more. I'd say do about four passes and then move on to the next one. Yeah, that's about right, about four. Okay. Then back over here. All right, the next step what we're gonna do is, like I said, we're building from the inside out. So what we wanna do is first do the white of the eyes, and then we'll start doing the facial colors, and then we'll do all the hair. So first, let's do the eyes of, uh, if you haven't noticed, it's Goku, by the way. We can do the eyes of Goku in here. <clears throat> and if I remember right, I have the drawing, I'll have to reference it again. There's no white, there's no black line under here. So it'll be a black line here, a black line here, and then uh, it goes halfway here, and then it's just white and then skin color right there. So I'm, I'm, trying, to, um, I'm trying to render him as realistically as he is in the cartoon the new Molotow uh, soft blue and black cap. And remember, you're going to be um, coming back with the black. So don't stress if you like, don't make it perfectly clean. Those original lines were just reference lines, remember? that looks pretty good. So now let's start lacing in some of the character colors. So when we're using the blue soft cap on the Molotow Premium, and remember this is papyrus, this is gonna be my dark tone for the skin. Um, it's not the thinnest tip for characters, but I wanna feature it in this video. It's a great outline cap and a good you know, soft cap, but it's gonna be a little bit thicker than normal. So if you want an ultra thin tip, it might not be the best choice, but for painting freights, um, doing large scale pieces, outlines, things like that, it's a great cap. It's, uh, it's very controllable, I'll definitely say that. So let's go ahead and start lacing in our color. This is Molotow Premium again. And uh, look at it go right over that chrome. Yeah, look at it go over that chrome. I mean, it's just amazing coverage. The Molotow Premium is a nitrocellulose lacquer, guys, just so you guys know. Um, it's gonna be a little bit different formula than the uh, acrylics and the um, the uh, enamel paints that you're probably used to painting with. It dries a lot faster and uh, it tends to work better in cold weather. Also, it's an automotive grade pigment, so you're gonna get a very long, uh, really long life outdoors, very good resistance. 
This is an automotive grade pigment, so it's gonna get a much better uh, life in the sun. So for people who paint freights and whatnot, this is an excellent choice. So anyways, let's go ahead and get painting here. Enough talk, more action, guys. Enough talk, more action. So now we're gonna do the second shade of the skin tone. It's a lighter lighter shade than the uh, than the papyrus. This is Sahara Beige Middle. So let's go ahead and lace it in. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. You're gonna go back over it with the black again anyways. So don't sweat it if the lines aren't perfect. We're just gesturing it in, covering over what was there before. This is spray paint. You can always go over what you did previously. Watch your paw, Inky. It's really starting to look like them, isn't it? Now let's do the highlight color and then start lacing in our blacks. All right guys, so here's the next step. We're gonna add the highlight color to the skin. Remember, we're doing a three color, uh, a three color combo for the character and that's usually a good starting point for most people. So remember, a dark shade, a middle tone, and a light shade. So remember, uh, in this one we got Papyrus, Sahara Beige Middle, and Sahara Beige Light. They all work really great together. Uh, basically, this is your basic color skin theory. You can work off other colors. This is just an example of how you can do it. It works great for uh, anime, uh, Dragon Ball dudes, stuff like that. This is a, a great combo. So let's go ahead and lace in that Sahara Beige Light. And again, we're using Sahara Beige Light. So I'm gonna start lacing that in here. Remember, this is just gestured in. It doesn't need to be perfect. Um, but you know, try to, try to do your best, of course. Dope, I think that looks great. All right, so let's, uh, let's do the hair now. Let's go ahead and start lacing in the hair. And again, I'm using the flame blue. And right now I'm using an airbrush tip, which is probably a little too thin for this job, but I just want to freak it. I like this cat. It's very thin, but it sprays fast, which I like. And it has a little bit of a flare to it, which is kind of fun too. So go ahead and put that in.
Now Goku has a huge spike that comes out the top of his head. Um, fortunately, it's going to be too big, so it's just going to have to bleed off the edge. I was really hoping to have it in the frame, but we got discs, so we got to go big, right? All right, so just go ahead and lace in that black. If you want this to go faster, um, I'd recommend using a New York fat cap, but I just don't feel like changing the cap, and this is working fine right now, so we'll just fix it. All you do is sit around these days. You're so old. You're such an old dog. All right, come on, baby. All right, so I switched it to the soft blue. Uh, it definitely will increase the spray much better. All right, so we got a can of Linda's sunset here, so we're gonna start lacing in his uniform. This, I don't know if you've noticed, the sun's starting to kind of move around, so we wanna be away from the direct sunlight now to keep the exposure pretty even. So let's go ahead and work down low, get low for a minute, and uh, start rocking in this Linda's sunset. I already broke my own rule, damn it. Remember I said to start your can off somewhere else? I didn't even do it, but like, thankfully, the Molotov cans are made so well, I didn't have to worry about anything. Um, also remember, whenever you have clothing, be sure to paint in that little part where the clothing kind of wraps around. Does that make sense, guys? Come back with your black and clean that up. You have that little bit of a, a shadow right there, uh, kind of delineating where the clothing wraps around your character. Generally, oranges don't cover well and they're often rather watery. I find Linda's Sunset to not be that way. Thankfully, it's a pretty good shade. Now, if I remember right, Goku's uniform has a, uh, kind of breaks like that, and then he's got the blue sleeves, right? Can some Dragon Ball experts confirm that? Someone out there in the fedora land? Let me know. So we'll go ahead and start. I'm basically just gonna base coat all of it with this color, and then I'll take the lighter shade of orange and just do highlights. And as you can see, the darker shades underneath will penetrate the orange. So just you go the opposite direction that you painted earlier to do your second layer, you should get much better coverage. So first layer like this, second layer like that. A lot of graffiti writers don't do that. They only pattern in one direction. I'm bi-directional, I'm bi. <laughs> Ay, 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 ay. Ay, cabrón. All right, so let's go ahead and, I think for this part down here, I'm just gonna kind of fade it out for now. We'll figure that out later.
This Goku's turning out tight. Oh, I gotta do that little emblem on his vest too. What's that thing called again? You remember? Someone out there in YouTube, let me know what that emblem's called. Actually, actually, Definitely, I would say my favorite cartoon of the 90s, right? You get home from school, it'll be like Darkwing Duck, Dragon Ball, Inspector Gadget. That was when cartoons were high quality. They kinda suck now, to be honest. So now we're just gonna fade it out on the bottom. Progressively, the further you go down, the further you get away from the surface. And then start from the top and do it again. Don't worry if the background penetrates through. It's a fade out, remember? It's supposed to do that. And I'm just kind of flicking my wrist. If you saw it from the angle, like I'm gonna go in like this. You feel me? Tips and tricks, guys, tips and tricks. For my dude Goku sleeves, we're gonna use this Signal Blue Flame Blue can. And um, it's a little bit lighter, I think, than his uniform is, but it's okay, it's close enough. And you can see I'm kind of pointing the can down so it just kind of fades out. And then I'm gonna do that same technique as before where I just go further away from the surface. We might draw a hand on him, I don't know yet. Let me step back and take a look at that. It's a little bit uneven. Okay, it's a little, a lot uneven, okay. Not perfect. Talking to you, uh, Love is for the birds. Nah, you all right, dude. I'm gonna meet you someday. We're gonna have beers. All right. Ah, that's still not quite right. The beauty of spray paint is you can just go right over what you messed up. Next, we're gonna use some Dare Orange Light with the stock blue dot that comes on the can. So we're gonna do just some highlights on his uniform, all right? You can just kind of reference them in, um, or just kind of, I mean, not reference. You can kind of just gesturally put them in, because remember, this is just kind of like the wrinkles in the clothing, right? So remember, it's just kind of an organic thing. It doesn't need to be perfect. None of this ever has to be perfect. You could always fix it. But I think that looks pretty good. What do you think, Ed? Looks good. Yeah. He's coming along. Let's use the white 
and uh, we need to fix the eyes a little bit um, just to kind of even them out. Actually, in the real drawing of Goku, they're actually a little bit crooked, so they don't have to be perfect either, but I do kind of want to adjust them just a little bit, and uh, then we'll move on to the black outline, and then we'll be done. I'm using the stock blue dot actually on a flame blue can. It actually gets a pretty thin line. It's doing pretty good. Just like that. This part takes practice, the outlining part. And um, the only thing I can tell you guys is just paint a lot. That's, that's the only way you'll get better at that part. Get clean outlines, just paint. Paint, 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 paint. Always the hardest part. There we go. I think I need to move that down. So in the reference photo I was using a Goku, he had these kind of like wrinkle whisker things, you know, they always put in anime. It, he doesn't always have them. I had them in the drawing initially and I didn't really like them so I painted over them. I don't know if you noticed that. The reason why is we're using spray paint and it gets a little bit muddy sometimes when you start getting all this black in here. And I think uh, we want it to really just shine with the face on its own. So in case you noticed that earlier, which I know you guys always notice everything, that's why that was like that. Alright, so there you go. We just uh, made lemonade out of those lemons. So this is what you can do. The next time someone rags out your stuff, take the opportunity to show them how much better you are. Um, 
I doubt the person that did that rag my piece could have done this. And it, this isn't even the top of my skill set, but it's a great way to do a simple character uh, based off of a popular show that we all love, Dragon Ball Z. Uh, anyways, that's my Goku, and these are the colors I use. And the cool thing about painting characters is you don't use a lot of paint. All these cans, they're all either about three quarters to a half full still. So I still have paint to do all the other characters if I wanted to. Um, so keep that in mind. You know, it's all layers, it's all steps, it's just little shifts of color here and there, just to kind of give it that depth, that look, and uh, to send a message to your competition. <clears throat> Remember kids, if you dish it out, be prepared to take it. That's all I gotta say. It's just a game on a wall where we all get together and rep our shit. That's all it is. Have a good time, no one gets killed, we just do some art and fucking rock on. So anyways, this is a GR from Art Primo. I hope you enjoyed my video and uh, we'll be doing some more soon and uh, you know, if you need graffiti supplies, all that type of stuff, all that good business, give us a call at 206-365-4083. Again, it's 206-365-4083. That's artprimo.com. Artprimo.com. I know I'm going to see a comment in this, a comment section saying, where do I order this stuff? Artprimo.com. Does that make sense? Okay. <laughs> All right, I love you guys. Uh, it's been a pleasure to do these videos for you. Um, I, wanna, I wanna see what you guys got going on, so please send me your stuff. Love is for the birds. Send me your artwork, man. I wanna see what you got. I know you're tight. Peace out.